What is up? What is going on, everybody? I am back with the Mariners post game recap. The Mariners pulled out tonight, two to nothing. I'm going to get into all of it. Once again, these last four games have been a little crazy. They've been a little wacky, but they all have one thing in common. These last four games, the Mariners have won every single one of them, and that's the most important thing right now. This team continues to get wins. Before I get started, if you guys can hit that sub button for me. I am 38 subscribers away from 2,000, and I could not do it without all of you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Truly from the bottom of my heart. Thank you all for the nice comments, for joining me in the live streams, hanging out, giving your takes on the team, for sub and for uh, everything. Thank you guys so much. So if you guys are new here, hit that sub button. Let's see if we can get this to 2,000 tonight. Let's do it. Let's make this. Uh, we've already got a great Mariners win. Let's cap it off with 2K subs. So thank you guys so much. Uh, this team, this team, you know, it, it, listen, these last four have been heart attack inducing. They have been stressful. They have been hair pulling at times tonight, a lot of hair pulling, but they found a way, you know, this is a good baseball team. I, I think we know that this is a good, solid baseball team. I don't know if we quite know the ceiling yet. I, I don't know it either. So I'm not trying to say like, I have all the insight here. I do not necessarily know what this team ceiling is, but they're good. And they're, they have not played, they've not played their best baseball the last four days, but they found a way. These were the games again in April, May, and June, they were losing. They were losing these games. They were either giving up the runs late or they didn't get those solo home runs early and they weren't keeping Houston off the board. Houston was the one getting the big hit and the Mariners weren't, you know, getting, like I said, getting the hits. Well, they didn't get the hits today, but they got the two home runs, you know, all, all that. And now the last four, you know, in April, May, they lose tonight. They lose two of those to Kansas City. Now they're finding ways to win. They're starting to win those close baseball games. We knew their record in one-run games was going to come back a little bit. They were not the worst team in baseball in one-run games. They shouldn't have been, at least. Now, I know this is not a one-run game, but two, one, all close games. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm going to get into all of it. Um, it wasn't just all like, oh, they just survived. There were some really good things tonight. There were some definitely, there were definitely some really, really good highlights tonight. Uh, that I'm going to get into. We will start, as always, with the pitching staff. What a start for Bryce Miller. It, on the road against a, a fantastic baseball team, a division rival, a team that's ahead of you in the playoff race, and to go six and a third, two hits, one walk, two Ks, uh, no earned runs, gets his eighth win of the year. I was a little nervous about this series. I'm still, it's not over, still two games left. But you don't have Logan, excuse me, you don't have Kirby in this series. You don't have Luis Castillo. You do have Logan tomorrow. But he's going up against Framber Valdez, one of the top pitchers in the American League. You're relying on Bryce Miller and Emerson Hancock to maybe get you a win or two here. Um, and Bryce comes through today with a huge, huge win. Now, get me one win. You've got two games. Get me one of them. Find a way to squeeze out a win in one of these two games. And we're feeling pretty good. You know, you, you take this series any way you can. And you avoid the disaster of, you know, being swept at the worst, worst case scenario. Now you're at least coming out of this with a win going to play the white Sox next. Um, so Bryce Miller, absolutely fantastic tonight. I know there was some controversy if Scott should have taken him out or not. Um, after the Caballero error, I do not think Scott took him out because of the Caballero error. I think it was just with Singleton coming up with that point in the lineup there. Um, you had Singleton McCormick and Pena. I, I, I would have left Miller in. I would have, but there was just something there where they decided when Miller got someone on base, they were going to go to the bullpen. And they went to Justin Topa, who was fantastic tonight in an inning in two thirds. Struck out one, didn't give up a hit, only threw um, 22 pitches in an inning in 230. Could still technically be available for tomorrow. Topa was fantastic. Munoz was great. Andres Munoz pitched really well. The defense tried to blow it. Oh my gosh, that ninth inning had me, uh, had me a little stressed out there. So Altuve. Infield hit, nothing you can do there. Gino made a great effort at it. Altuve runs well. Um, nothing you're going to do there. Gino made a great effort at it. Wasn't bad defense. Wasn't bad pitching. Just Altuve literally hitting them where they ain't and using his speed. Got on. Next batter is Bregman. Taylor made double play. Taylor made. Gino to Rojas, and Rojas just drops it. I mean, easiest double play of the season. And then you got Jordan Alvarez coming up. The last thing you want to do is leave a runner on for Jordan Alvarez. You get the double play. Worst case, Jordan homers, fine, two to one, move on. 
Jordan hits a little grounder that Caballero. Now, Caballero was shaded a little bit towards the second base side, so he kind of had to come around. It, not, not a play he should make, not not take, not take trying to excuse the poor defense. But um, Caballero bobbles it, boots it, and the runner ends up getting to third. So now you got first and third with one out, and they get Yiner Diaz to ground into a game-ending double play. Munoz dials up three possible double play grounders in that ninth inning to get out of it. Um, so nice job there by Munoz. And he only threw, uh, Munoz only threw 11 pitches, despite two batters, or technically three, reaching base. I mean, because Altuve and then Bregman on the ground out, and, uh, um, and Alvarez, although they did get one out in the Bregman ground out. So I don't know how you want to look at that, but nice job by Munoz. Pitching was fantastic today. And remember, you know, last time the Mariners played the Astros, they took three to four, but you had no Altuve, no Alvarez in the lineup. Um, listen, I talk about that's why you wanted to play the Astros in that series when that happened, because you want to get them when they're not at their best. You know, that was the time to take advantage and get three out of four. Now they're healthier. They're still missing some pitchers, um, but this is this is the lineup that is, this is a dangerous lineup, especially at the top there. Um, and the Mariners held them in check. Only four hits tonight for the Astros. Diaz had two of them. And then Altuve and I think Alvarez. I think they gave Alvarez a hit on that ground or the Cobby just because of how far he had to range over. Whatever. I don't really care about hits and errors. It's it's a play I think Cobby should have made. So I'll, I'll just end it at that. So two of those hits were in the ninth inning. Other than that, Diaz was the only one with a hit all game. So kudos to the Mariners pitching staff. Can we talk about Julio Rodriguez again? Four for five. A home run that I don't think has landed yet. I don't think it has. Um, four for five, uh, the home run, and then uh, could have had a hit on a line drive that Pena dropped. It, it was an error for sure. But, you know, with maybe generous scoring, maybe it's a hit. Julio ties a team record with nine hits and nine straight at-bats. Um, my gosh, is Julio and Franco. He just missed a home run down the right field line. And I thought they might have sh should have looked at again. I went down the right field line. It, I'm assuming it was foul. Nobody really argued it. I thought it hooked around and was fair, uh, but it was called foul. He ended up singling in that at bat. I mean, even in his his one out, he reached base on the air. A um, couple stolen bases today as well. Hopefully, his ankle or whatever that was in the ninth inning is okay. Looks like he rolled up on a little bit. I mean, he stayed in the game, so I think he's all right. But man, you cannot lose Julio. I mean, of everybody that you can't lose. Julio is number one right now. I mean, talk about yesterday how he was eighth in the AL in F4. He jumped up again yesterday with – he's now up to 4.3 uh, F4 on the season. I'm sure that's going to go up again tonight after the game. I mean, Julio is closing in on five wins, being five wins above replacement level very, very quickly here. Um, it's a great game for Julio. Uh, Teo was three for four. Good game for Teo. I think he had a ringing double off the center field wall, which in Houston – is not an easy place to hit it out of. Dead center field there. Mike Ford with a solo home run. Good to see. Listen, if Mike Ford's going to do nothing else, occasionally run into a home run. That, that you know, I mean, if he's going to stay on the roster, he's got to do that. So good for Mike Ford. Uh, Caballero worked the only walk. Mares went 0 for 17 with runners in scoring position. Has a team ever won a game going 0 for 17 with runners in scoring position? I'd be very curious to find the data on that. I'm going to guess no. I'm going to say they haven't, but, you know, I, I guess they got the guys on, like keep, keep fighting, keep putting guys on. And, you know, you're not going to go over 17 with runners in scoring position again. So put that many runners on, eventually you're going to score a few runs. I mean, not only were they over 17, they didn't even get like sack flies with guys on third. Like it was, you could even make that worse because there were times when they didn't need a hit. They just needed a sack fly or a grounder to get a guy home and they couldn't do that. Yeah, 0 for 17 with runners on. The Astros were actually technically 1 for 3. That's crazy. Astros were 1 because um, um, where did they get a hit with a runner in scoring position? Oh, uh, Altuve was at second because Cal Raleigh dropped the ball of the ninth and Jordan had the hit. Technically, that is a hit with runner in scoring position. So, I mean, over 17 is just insane. But they won. They got to clean that up a little bit. That's got to be better. You know, you can't keep doing that. You're not going to beat the Astros again going 0 for 17. The good news is I don't think they're going to go over 17 again. I don't think you'll see that happening again. So, um, you know, the Astros showing why their pitching staff's just a little bit better than the Royals pitching staff, I would say. Um, you know, no doubt. But the Mayors get the win. They move. Let's check out the standings because obviously Houston lost. Um, 
And then obviously, as we go to MLB.com, Toronto lost. Texas lost as well. Or Texas is losing 9-6, to six, bottom of the ninth, down 9-6. So I'm going to do something stupid and assume Texas loses. You would be five back of Texas in the division. And in the wild card, the Mariners are currently a playoff team. They currently hold the third spot in the playoff, and they're in the playoffs, and they're two and a half behind Houston for the second wild card. They're five and a half behind Tampa, who is playing right now. Now, and Tampa is tied five five with the Angels and the six. So go Angels there. Hope you can cut into that lead as well. So uh, listen, a, a, a W. This team's won four in a row after a tough little three game. Listen, they lost three games in a row that were up for grabs. Now they've won four in a row that have kind of been up for grabs and they've pulled it out. You know, at the end of the day, like I've, like I've been saying the last week, there's no more pictures on the scorecards anymore. It's winning games. It's finding ways to get wins. I, I don't care how it's done. I would like to win games by a little bit more than one and two runs to help my heart rate and to keep me alive a little bit longer, but they're finding ways to get it done. And, and, and that's the most important thing. And here doing it against a really good baseball team and the Houston Astros. So a really, really nice win tonight for the Mariners. Say themselves up well for the next two games. Um, they're both going to be tough. So, you know, be prepared. Next two games are not going to be easy ones. You're going to have to dig and find a way, which is what they did tonight. They, they did not play their best baseball. 0 for 17 is not acceptable with runners in scoring position. There's no doubt about that. But if you can do that and still win a baseball game, Hats off to you, right? I, I mean, you, you got a battle. You got to got grind through it. Julio found a way to hit one that I still don't think has landed yet. Mike Ford got one out, and the pitching was amazing. The pitching did its job, and, and you got the dub. So that's all I've got for tonight. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Four in a row. Hopefully they can make it five tomorrow as they go for the series win against the Houston Astros. Good times. It, it feels good right now. It's starting to feel, you know, like a playoff team. I mean, it, it has, but it's starting to feel like, that this could happen here. So get that 0 for 17 cleaned up and let's let's get it going. Let's let's get the W. Let's get the series W tomorrow. As always, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Friday night. Enjoy it. Have a great night. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys all tomorrow night. And as always, go Mariners. Peace.